Yo, what's going on guys, hope you are doing well. So just as you saw in today's video, we're gonna be talking about key features on the FX3 that you need to know. So without wasting any of your time, I'm gonna get straight into the first one, which for me is one of the most important features that everyone who has an FX3 needs to know, and that is on the audio handle. There's a lot of things to say about this, you know, good, bad, yeah, we're not gonna get into the audio handle and the, the top handle right now, but just on the, the feature that's literally saved my life on a shoot when I've had audio that's just completely clipped. Now, when you are only, you only have one audio device in, which is you know very often for myself, when I have the camera on, sorry, the mic on top of the camera, I only have one audio um, source coming in. Now, the reason why I'm confident in that one audio source is because on the FX3, you have the ability to split the audio input onto two different channels. So when you go into post, your left channel is one audio input and your right channel is another audio input. So the reason why this is beneficial, let's say you're out running and gunning and you're shooting a, I don't know, documentary of someone going on a walk. You know, you're getting their B-roll and they're them talking while you're outside. Now, you can't really be doing everything where you're monitoring audio, you're monitoring the lighting, you're monitoring the camera, like every single thing. So just having one thing off your mind just makes the whole process a lot easier. So on the FX3, when you set at the back here, if you set it to input one at the bottom, uh, you can't really see it, but yeah, if you, you have the top hand, you know what it looks like. Um, you set this to input one at the very bottom. Now, you have your normal input, your mic going into the side handle, just as normal. Then on the side, you would set your one to just the normal thing. You have it on manual, you set your normal levels to where you think would be suitable. Then in section two, on input two, you would set this to manual as well. Now you can leave it on auto, you can leave it on link. Link just means it will copy over and it'll be the same. So that is the, just that main thing, just setting it from link to manual because it's kind of it's on default, it does start at link, which means it's just gonna copy over as a normal um, you know, stereo um, input of what your left is, your right is the same thing. But if you set that to ma or, um, sorry, if you set that to manual, you can then adjust that to the level you want it to be. So I, most of the time, I would set my audio levels, let's say I have my um, left and input one gain set to seven, I would set my level two, or sorry, input two to level three or four. That way I know if something clips on in audio one, I have a backup of it in audio two. And it's really simple in post, all you need to do is just split your audio channels, make it a mono channel, or if you, you, know, you don't have anything that does clip, you can just go fill right of left or fill left of right, that kind of thing, and just copy your audio over. So to show you this more clearly, at the back, you wanna have your input selection to input one, um, yeah, I just have the bottom one. Then on the side, you wanna have your section two set to manual with your gain level, at whatever it is, just something lower than the first one. So the first one I have here, like what, like seven or eight, and then here I have this one on five. Oh, and then you can see, I have this Shure mic plugged in right now. So if you look at the audio levels, as I tap on the mic, see how the top one, channel one, is clipping, but channel two isn't. And that's how this can save you. The next one, again, is something that's actually physical. So on the FX3 of all these buttons around the camera, um, they're not just there for no reason, but they actually have, you actually have the ability to lock your settings once you've set them. So let's say you know, you're outside again, you're, you're following someone, um, outside and you know you don't want to mess up your settings. You set everything you know, 150 per second, you know, your ISOs on the base 640, your um, iris, your aperture is there at, I don't know, let's say 1.8. And you don't want any of that to change because if that changes, your image won't look how you want to how you want it to look. Now all you have to do is just move me, tap on one of them, tap on iris, tap on ISO, and all that's going to do is just put a little lock symbol so you can no longer change those settings until you tap that again. Now the reason this is so great is because these dials they're very easy to turn. It takes the slightest hand movement to turn it down. Now your settings can be completely wrong. You know, if your shutter speed changes, you could have a lot of flickering from lights in the background or lights in the foreground. If, you know, if you're not on the same frequency, you will have a lot of flickering. And really, you can't really do much about that in post. You know, if that happens, your shot's pretty much ruined. So these little things just make it easier so that doesn't happen. You know, it saves you from messing up your shot. Now, the next feature may seem quite obvious to some people, but others may not even think about this, but because this is a cinema camera, a lot of the times you're not actually using this monitor here because mm, it's very basic, you can't do much of it. You know, the exposure on it is not great, the tools and everything, we're not getting into that. But a lot of the time you're using an external monitor which has a lot of features and stuff that just makes it easier to use your camera. That's perfect, that's great. But because most people use that and they have the external monitor, it means this door 
is often closed. You know, you, you may look at it a few, a few times, but a lot of the time, because you're using the external monitor on top or on the side, wherever it is, this door ends up being closed. And the reason why you actually don't want to do this and you do want to keep it open, even if it's just opening it a little bit, like it doesn't actually have to be completely um, open to the side where you can see it, but it just needs to be off the back because that is going to really just generate a lot of heat. So if you want your FX3 to perform the best where it's not getting too hot, because like you really do feel it's hot to the touch, if you do have this door closed, just remember to keep that door open just so your camera doesn't overheat. Now the FX3, yes, it does have fans. It does a very good job at, job at that, but no system really is going to perform at its optimal performance when it is on like the, the brisk of overheating. So those are the three main features that many people may not know, but is kind of vital that you do know those because they can make your life a lot easier with this camera. But in addition to that, I want to kind of talk about some of the things inside the camera that have made my life easier. The first one being proxies. Now, this isn't um, new to Sony's and, you know, it's people been kind of using this for a while, but I've never understood why Sony people spend so much time creating proxies in post or having to transcode footage and do this stuff when your camera literally does it for you. Like when you go onto the menu system, you have the proxies there. So every time you record a 4K clip or 1080 clip, depending on how powerful your computer is, but they can link a lower resolution file. So when you, you don't really have trouble editing the high resolution files that come with the FX3. Now, this is just going to save you so much time and effort. You, know, you don't have to spend hours recording, sorry, transcoding proxies, um, creating proxies yourself, because all you have to do is just attach them in post. You know, when you are editing, you have your clips, all you do is highlight them all, attach proxies, there you are. That's like You have all the lower resolution files. Now you can have a much smooth sailing editing experience. Now, in addition to um, recording proxies, another thing that this camera can do inside that I really like is the ability to change your file names. Now, a lot of people don't really see the benefit in this, but if you're a person who shoots with multiple cameras or multiple of the same camera, if, your cam or if the cameras are all filing the, the clips as, as the same thing, you're gonna have clips that either have the same numbers or you'll just get confused with which camera's which. Now, the benefit of what this camera can do, being able to change your file name. So for example, I have mine as JC underscore FX3, knowing I'm JC, this is my FX3. So if I get another FX3, like on a shoot I did a couple weeks ago, we had two FX3s. How am I gonna know which clip, which one's which, which camera's what? This just makes it a lot easier when you have every clip labeled as that. And if you're hiring a camera, for example, you don't have time to be, you know, labeling all the SD cards and everything. This, this again, just makes it so much easier to distinguish which one is which. And the very last thing that I do wanna go over that is very beneficial on this camera, again, linking to if you do have multiple cameras or multiple of the same camera, you can save your settings of how you set your camera up perfectly, copy that over, and have it in another camera. So let's say I have two of these. I've just set this one up, this is my own, but I have another one I've hired for a shoot. If I want them to be identical, I want the settings to match, instead of me having to go through and dial in every single setting again, all I have to do is save the settings on my SD card from this, put that SD card in the new camera, and there we are. I have the exact same setup on both cameras without having to do it myself. And this also acts as a great backup. You know, if you have an SD card, um, so if you have a saved kind of format of how you have your FX3, you can save that on your computer, save it on your hard drive. So if ever, God forbid, your FX3 goes missing, it breaks, whatever, you have to get a replacement one, all you have to do is put that file that's on your SD card on your hard drive, so on your hard drive, on your SD card, back into your FX3, and your FX3 is back to the way it was. But yeah, those are the key features that you need to know about your FX3. So if you have got a lesson, laugh, or a light bulb moment, I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like down below. And if you're actually nice, you could hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. See you.